Hello, everybody, and welcome to Habits of Influence, a different kind of podcast where we guide you through the good, the bad, and the ugly side of entrepreneurship and show you that being in business is not what you see outside with the accolades and the overnight successes. It's not all peaches and roses. And we're here to hold your hand and guide you on your journey as friends and help you understand that there are different sides and different aspects to everything. And with you, as usual, is the self-proclaimed dark side, Magdalena Hammer, and my light and kind co-host, Ian Manheimer. <laughs> Happy to be with you again uh, in yet another episode of Habits of Influence. Today, I wanted to touch upon the topic of do as i say not as i do you know oftentimes when we meet up with mentors um or we sign up with mentors even in a, on a paid basis uh, we often have the impression that they're not necessarily showing us the exact same things that they're doing uh, and they are proposing different steps to us which i've noticed aggravates a lot of people and i believe this is something that uh, we should discuss how do we look at that how do we check if a person is are genuinely helping us or if they are just being a fake uh, because and i'm going to start here in my honest opinion it's not always a case of being dishonest even though you are proposing something different to your people uh, or the people that you're guiding as opposed to what you're doing yourself but i wanted to know your take on it ian what do you think well i think you just hit the nail on the head with a, a key point of the do as i say not as i do because people are at different stages so for me, I started this journey of personal development and growth 32 years ago. So where I was then, that was when I was 15, 16 years old, you know, when I was giving up drugs and alcohol and where I was at, at that point in my life, what I needed is a lot different from what I need now through the courses, through life experience, through everything is different. However, if I'm working with somebody who's just starting their journey, I might tell them things that I no longer practice myself because I don't need those foundational skills anymore. I'm beyond that. Now, that doesn't mean it's not a good good starting point or a good foundation, and we don't need a foundation. We always need to remember that foundation. However, where I'm currently at in my journey is a little bit different, so what I might recommend might be different from what I tell somebody else. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's the same with me, and uh, oftentimes I get asked the questions like, okay, but are you doing it yourself? Because it seems to be like a pet peeve of a lot of people, doesn't it? Um, if you're not doing it, why are you giving it to me? Uh, but that's not the case. It's, it's like you're saying, you used to be at a certain stage. You've checked if certain things work or they don't work, if they are helpful or not helpful, and you know exactly uh, how to steer that person that you're guiding in the right direction in order to in order for them to kind of go through that path go through that journey quicker right so it's not a case of you trying to be dishonest and uh, telling them something completely different but you have to understand that people get on different stages of business that people are on different stages of business different stages of life different stages of growth and all of those stages di require different approaches right uh, absolutely and and also not, there's never one specific solution that works for everybody. Sometimes it's a trial and error. And sometimes what works for me in one instance is not going to work for you in the same instance. And as we we're having a previous conversation, you know, I might be able to help with certain things that I've gone through in the past, but there's maybe certain things I don't necessarily relate to, like what we spoke about a few minutes ago. You know, I can never tell you how to be a woman. I've never been a woman. You know, I can tell you certain things I've struggled with or certain ways I've overcome obstacles that you may be facing, but our approaches are going to be different. Our responses are going to be different based on who you are and where you're at currently in your journey and what life experiences you have as well. Yeah. Would you like to expand on what we actually chatted about uh, a few minutes back before uh, put, hitting the recording button? Because I think it's very valuable to hear for a lot of people. Um you know, you, you started upon you're not a woman, but where does it come from? I know that you work with a lot of women. So uh, how would you approach <laughs> that uh, gap in between of like, I don't know what who you are as a person, or I don't know how to walk in your shoes per se, but I can help you with such and such aspects of your life? Well, I, I think it really just comes down to everyone's individual life experiences, what we've learned, what classes we've taken, what programs we followed. And yeah we all deal with similar issues or struggles. So for example, I think the one I talked about earlier was about self-esteem. When I was younger, I did not have self-esteem. I did not have self-worth. I didn't like who I was. Um, 
And I did a lot of things to get attention for myself. You know, I, I was a bully. I did, I was mean to people. I was doing drugs and alcohol. I did everything I possibly could to be popular or to gain attention because I didn't value who I was. I, my value was in being mean to somebody. So it made me seem to be cool or seem stronger than I really was because I wasn't strong on the inside. Um, but so if, if we're talking about a self-esteem issue or self-worth, I can talk about that or I can share my experience or things I've done to get past those limiting beliefs or the ways of thinking that kind of help keep me down. But without walking in your shoes, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do it for you. I can share my experience. I can share tricks that I've done. I can share strategies, but there's no one right or wrong answer. It's going to be different for each individual. And as we go along on this journey, what I do now to help myself feel better may be different from what I did five years ago, 10 years ago. It's going to be different when I do five years from now, a year from now, because we're constantly evolving. We're constantly learning. We're constantly upping our game, if that makes sense. So it's, 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 it's an evolution, I guess, is what I would try to say. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, just touching upon what you just said, I think what I would add is a, the most important thing about a good coach or mentor is to be relevant to a mentee situation or the person they're guiding with, um, their guiding situation, right? And it's not necessarily going to be a one-to-one -one comparison in terms of, you know, my experiences, your experiences, because like you said, everyone's different. Everybody's been through a different journey and it's in that personalization that we give the best advice or uh, give the best help to people, right? Because it, it's not, like I said, it's not a cookie cutter strategy. It's, it's, it's a little bit about uh, where you are right now, but also where you've been in the past or where you want to go, because we don't necessarily aim at the same directions as well. Yeah. And, and as you're talking, it made me think of a situation. And when we're looking at somebody as a guide, as a coach, as a mentor, somebody who's going to help us grow, what I look for is I look for people who are where I want to be, not where I'm at now, not where I was, but where I want to be. And if I really want to be in a certain spot, then I'm going to ask them for their, their advice, their guidance, because I want what they have. Mm -hmm. If I want what somebody else has, then I have to be willing to do what they do to get there. So we have, like you said, being open to that mentorship, being open to what they have to say. And um, I think of, I remember I heard Eric Thomas one time and it was, he talked about the story of the guru. Are you familiar with that one? No, go ahead. Oh, there's this young guy who wanted to be, he wanted to be rich and successful. And he met this guru. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to summarize this because it goes longer. And basically the guru told him to meet him at the beach. And he's like, he goes, you know, I want to learn how to make money. I don't want to go swimming. He's like, if you want to learn how to be successful, you meet me at the beach at 5 a.m. or whatever it was. And he goes on this story about how the guru starts walking out in the water. He says, follow me into the water. And he's like, I came to make money. I didn't come to swim. And finally he gets about neck deep and he shoves his head underwater. And the moral of the story was, he goes, when, when you were underwater, was the one thing you wanted more than anything else? And it was, I wanted to be able to breathe. He says, when you want to be, when you want to be um, successful as much as you want to be able to breathe, then you'll be successful, right? So, wow. so it was kind of a cool little story of, you know, yeah, going out in the water isn't what's going to necessarily make you successful, but you got to do what, what you're being told by somebody who's where you want to be. Mm -hmm. As long as it aligns with your core values, I will say that. Because sometimes you, you may not align with core values, and then that's a whole nother topic we can talk about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this this story correlates a lot in the um, the plot of the movie Karate Kid, doesn't it? It's just like sometimes you have to do a set of things that might not necessarily seem relevant to what you want to achieve, uh, but they are nevertheless helpful on your journey. So, uh, yeah, that's great. So can you please tell me, in your opinion, uh, how do we distinguish if someone is being truthful, if they are being, um, you know, led with integrity, they know what they're talking about. You say you're aiming for people who have the results. So how do you check if people actually do have the results? Because we have such a huge, vast amount of people who, you know, there's, there's two types of marketers, those that flaunt their bank, bank accounts and those that um, kind of like throw value all the time, nonstop and uh, expecting for the best. Um, and I, I suppose it's a decision which one you want to go, but how do you specifically, what do you look at when you choose a mentor, knowing that this is the right person speaking the right things and they are actually truthful in their journey? Well, I, I think that that's always a struggle is finding the authenticity, right? Because um, people say one thing often do something different. 
So I think for me, what it really comes down to is observing, watching, actually having conversations with somebody. And when you say, you know, you ask the questions, you know, if, if it's, if it's something about wealth building, you know, you ask questions, you know, what, what are strategies you do to, to accumulate wealth? And if they can give you a list of strategies that make sense, they say, oh, just follow my step, my step program, you're going to be a millionaire. Well, that doesn't tell me what you're doing. Are you doing investments? Are you real estate? Are you, you know, how are you doing? Oh, just, just follow what I say. Well, that doesn't tell me anything. Mm -hmm. So actually having the authentic conversations with somebody and, you know, having them say, okay, yes, this is, these are things I've done to accumulate wealth, or if it's a spirituality or health journey or whatever it is, finding people who are walking the walk, not just talking the talk and their lifestyle reflects that success. It's not about the dollar signs or about the fancy car or, you know, living on a boat. It's about who are they as a person and are they actually living a lifestyle in which I would like to live? That's what I, that's what I look for. Not just the smoke and mirrors and the, oh, here, let me hold, hold up my hundred dollar bills and take a picture in front of this mansion. It's, it's the, how are they, how are they carrying themselves? How are they showing up in the world? At least that's for me. That's what I look for. Absolutely. I would add for me as well. It's knowing that they care, that they don't treat me like just yet another number, that they are genuinely interested in uh, what I have to say about my journey, about where I've been, where I want to go to. And not in terms of just, you know, ranking up the dollars, but um, as a human being, just wanting to help me. And you can feel that by asking those relevant questions that you've mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've recently watched a show and I think it kind of brilliantly sums up today's subject. A lady was being asked on an interview. Uh, I, I think it was a YouTube podcast. Uh, she she has an OnlyFans account. So she, uh, specifically, she's been asked about her wealth and how how you know she accumulated her money and how is she planning on keeping the money for herself. And um, well, the the whole interview went astray because she got really really defensive when being asked by a person who's a um, multi millionaire investor, somebody who actually knows what they're doing uh, in terms of you know investing money once you do have it because you know it's not a case of actually earning the money it's a case of keeping the money or or building your wealth even further if that's your goal so i remember she got really really defensive she's had a brilliant opportunity of you know representing her point of view and just being um just just giving good arguments to for the sake of this conversation where she got really defensive stood up and just left you know and uh you know, she, she started being really, really irrelevant. What hit me was that here she was with such a huge opportunity of showing her knowledge, skills, regardless of what business you make. If you yeah. know what you're doing and if you know how to do it well, you know how to explain it to other people. And I think this is something that should always guide us when we're choosing our mentors or when we try and become become great mentors ourselves, right? It's that moment uh, in, a, uh, in a minute of an interaction of how you're going to handle the conversations around what you do, around your integrity and around your own plans of growth. And you brought up a really good point about that too. Um, how we respond to people is so important. It's so important, especially... You know, people who have experience or have a skill set that we want, they're doing us a favor by sharing their time with us. Yeah. Anybody. And it's, it's funny. It, we see it in, in this world so, so often. You have those people who, like you said, you know, they, they, it's the smoke and mirrors or the, the people who genuinely care. And those who genuinely care will invest in you. But then you got you to be able to show gratitude. Yeah. You gotta be able to, you know, you don't just go and say, Hey, can I pick your brain? Oh, I don't want to hear what you have to say. Oh no, that's wrong. And, and you're going to combat everything they tell you show up, show a little bit of appreciation. Even if you don't agree with what they're saying, if you're asking a question on how do you, how do I get, you know, it's, it's like asking directions to the store. You know, oh, you're going to come down here and make a left turn. You know, great. Oh no, that's not the way you get there. Well, that, that is how you get there. I just showed you here. It is on the map. Oh, I, I don't, I don't want to go that way. Well, okay. You can argue all day long. But if you're asking some, if you're taking the time to ask a mentor, a guide, a coach, whatever, for their advice, their suggestion, their opinion, be humble enough to accept it and say, okay. And even if you don't agree with it or don't think that's the right way, at least look at it from their perspective and try to understand what they're saying. Yeah. And right? also appreciate their time, right? Because if someone is investing in you, um, you can take the advice or you can leave the advice. It's up to you. But just appreciate that. A person really wants to help you and they really want to take you out of that place of challenge. 
Um, so yeah, I think you know this is a whole topic for another subject, and I think it should be uh, it should be good to actually undertake it at some point in time. But yeah, you know, just just pay attention to what people are doing and saying. And if you do come across a person who truly cares, you know, run with it, run with it, whatever. Uh, whether it is paid or free, just run with it, stay grateful and try and remain consistent. I think I think that would be the, you know, the, the sum it up of this whole subject. Yeah, I mean, consistency is always going to be key in anything. You can't just expect overnight success in any area. And um, and it's just it's one of those things where it's a cost. It's, it's, an, it's an evolution. It is an evolution. Yeah. And the more consistent we are with anything, whether it's our habits or our behavior, our responses, the way we learn to communicate, the more consistent we are, the better we're going to grow and the stronger we're going to develop those roots and those foundations. Mm -hmm. And those foundations are what's going to make us strong in all areas of our life, not just one. Yeah, true, true. All right, guys, uh, what do you think? How do you choose your mentors? What do you pay attention to? Let us know on our YouTube channel, uh, Habits of Influence. If you want to see our faces and interact with us, this is the best way to do it. Otherwise, if you're just listening, uh, subscribe to our podcast. It's on all major platforms. Um, you, we are here for you every single week to guide you. Uh, but we would also love to know what your opinions are. Do you think that people pay more attention when they pay money or are you being that person who pays attention to being grateful to your mentors? How do you choose them? What do you pay attention to? Leave all of your thoughts in the comment section and we're going to see you next week with another episode of Habits of Influence. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for listening, tuning in. See you later. Bye-bye.